welcome back to another redstone video. Today we're going to be looking at redstone for dummies. In other words, basic redstone, all the redstone components and all. So, without further ado, behind me I have a redstone contraption, very simple. But a lot of people are like, they look at this and they're like, oh my gosh, what the heck is this thing? And honestly, I was like that about two months ago. I really learned redstone. Like, probably about a month ago, when I started just, I started taking a huge interest in it. Because, I mean, it's very, you can make amazingly complex contraptions with it. And I basically, what I did is I went on YouTube and I looked at a bunch of redstone YouTubers. That's how I really got into it. So, if you don't know what redstone is, redstone is basically electricity in Minecraft. Like, it can, for example, it can make pistons move like this and cause things like this to happen. It can activate pistons, right? It can also activate things like droppers, dispensers. We'll get into it. But basically, think of it like electricity. That's what I do. Alright, so we're just going to start with the basics of redstone. So, for the basics of redstone, first we have the redstone dust itself, which is, this is what it looks like. Redstone dust has a signal strength of 15. That means, well, I mean, as you can see, 15. This is 15 blocks wide, or sorry, long. But as, as you can see, that this lever here is outputting a strength of 15. So since the redstone is right next to the input, in this case it's a lever, it will be, it will be able to extend for 15 blocks. But as you can see, this is the 16th block, it does not, it's not powered. Alright, so you might be thinking, well if you can only have redstone go for 15 blocks, that's kind of useless, right? Well, then of course, Minecraft introduced something called a repeater. So a repeater does exactly what its name suggests. It repeats a redstone signal. So for example, I put it here, and then I put more redstone here, and let's see what happens. As you can probably guess, the repeater will activate, even with this low signal, and it'll turn it back into the original 15. So that's pretty cool. Repeaters are very handy. Alright, so now what we have is, as you've probably heard me say just now, I input. So input devices are things that will trigger redstone. So they will turn redstone on. So here we have a stone pressure plate. And stone pressure plates start with the 15 signal. Wooden pressure plates, same thing, 15 signal. Except for the difference between stone and wooden pressure plates is that wooden pressure plates will activate if an item is thrown. But stone does not and only activates if an entity, like a player or, a, or like a cow or a mob or some other mob, is put on it. So as you saw earlier, this is a lever. It gives out a constant signal that can be toggleable. Here's a redstone torch. It's not toggleable. It's always on. It, it doesn't. It cannot turn off in this case. Here is a is a uh, gold pressure plate, also known as the light pressure plate. And then this is the heavy pressure plate, also known as the iron pressure plate. The thing with these two is that, as you can see, oops, their signal strength is very low. They don't go to the 15. Unless if you cram tons of stuff on them. So the gold pressure plate acts the exact same as the wooden pressure plate in that you can throw items on it. And the more items you throw, it will eventually be, the signal strength will increase. And this, the more entities you have on it, the signal strength will increase all the way up to 15. Alright, so for, now we have buttons. Unfortunately, wooden and stone button are basically the same exact thing. But... It depends on how, which way you like look. And so buttons, basically, they send off a redstone signal for a period of time, and then they stop. Versus the lever, which, if you remember, is fully, it just stays on forever. I can just keep that on forever. Sorry, guys, for the sniffling again. Alright. Anyways, redstone blocks are made using redstone dust, nine redstone dust, and they have the same effect on redstone as torches do, except for one thing. And that is, for example, if I put a repeater here and a lever here, I can turn this redstone torch off so it no longer gives out a signal. However, I cannot do that to the redstone block. The redstone block is actually always on. Redstone blocks are especially useful for pistonry, as you saw in the very beginning of this video. It can be made to make things like this. Alright, next, we have what I call like specialty input devices, or conditional input devices. So, for example, tripwire hook, where it will only activate redstone. It activates 15 signal strength, same as the buttons or the lever. However, it will only activate if an entity comes across this 
here, and it requires string to be tied between the two tripwire hooks. So that's a little fun fact for you. All right. Next, we have the daylight sensor, which basically senses the time of day, how high the sun is in the sky, or if you turn to the inverted mode, how high the moon is in the sky, or how dark it is. And it will uh, give a, a signal strength according to that. So right now, it's like, I think it's like morning time probably, so it's not going to have its 15. As you can see, it only has like, I think it's like probably 9-ish signal strength here. So yeah. Then we have the newest redstone block in Minecraft, the observer block, and the observer block detects block updates. So, for example, if I put the sandstone here, you can see it's, it gives out a really short one tick pulse. Then I break it, it gives off another pulse. So that's pretty cool. Very handy in lots of redstone contraptions. So, this you're probably like, this is just a chest. Like, why is there so much redstone about it? So, trap chests are very interesting because they, look at that. If you open the chest, you will get a redstone signal from it. However, you might think that this is not powered. It is. It just is such a low signal strength that you need. You should use a repeater if you're going to use any long, uh, long redstone lines for circuitry. All right, here we have ourselves a note block. So note blocks are kind of weird. What you do is you tune them with your hand, and then, for example, if you make a redstone clock like this. It will keep playing that same signal. Unless if I change it like that. It'll, the tone will change. Alright. This is a sticky piston. Sticky pistons are really cool. And they're very handy in many redstone contraptions. Such as automatic doors. And like trap doors. And hidden staircases. Things like that. What they do is they push their block up one. And then they retract it. Pistons can push up to 12 blocks. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, six 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, 11, 12, 13. See? 13 cannot push. Now, if we subtract one block, you can see it pushes it just fine. However, sticky pistons, since this is not a sticky block at all, this is just a cl uh, normal block, it will not be able to retract this. However, there is something we we can use to get around this. Slime blocks are sticky. And look at that. Oh, my bad. I, for, I forgot. There we go. Alright, so. Yeah. So that's the sticky piston. So has a push strength of 12 blocks. That goes the same for the normal piston, except normal piston can push, but it cannot pull. So that can also be very handy in some contraptions, especially in automatic farms. All right, so this is the dispenser up here, and this is the dropper down here. So the difference is they both will normally drop out blocks like sandstone or like redstone on the ground. However, for things like arrows or fireballs or potions, the dispenser will shoot it out, like this, Ow. and the dropper will simply just drop the item. So, very helpful for base defending and uh, automatic armor. Alright, so these are the red. These are all the redstone, well, just doors in general. So, this is your classic wooden door. This is also a wooden door. I just put this in there to show that they're not different. They are the exact same. All the other types of textured doors are all the exact same. This is my favorite door. It's dark oak. I love it. And, uh, so, yeah. So, as you can see, I can open these with my fists. And they're openable using redstone. However, this iron door, I cannot open with, oh, I cannot open with my fists, no matter how hard I try. I mean, I can break the door down in creative, but I cannot open it with my fists. So, however, using redstone, I can open it and close the door. Okay, so here we have ourselves trapped, we have fence gates and a uh, trap door. So, these can both be opened by redstone and by hand, except the iron trap door can only be opened by redstone. It's very, the exact same thing as the door over there. I th think that fence gates, they're actually not as useful as a lot of people think they are. They're, they're very good decorative for like farms and barns and stuff, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't use them. Alright, here what we have is the redstone lamp. 
It's a toggleable light, unlike glowstone or torches, and they give a nice feel. You can make automatic lights with, like, push a button, and the light goes off. And here is every last, well, not last, but last of all of these output devices is the TNT. The TNT is probably the most known redstone thing in all of Minecraft. It is amazing, it's super fun, and it explodes. <laughs> it's an amazing blast radius. It's really cool for many contraptions and just simply blowing up things. All right, like who doesn't like blowing up things? Anyways, uh, so now let's go to the my one of the last but most confusing and mind-boggling contraptions ever. All right, this is the comparator, one of the most crazy, ridiculous, mind-boggling redstone pieces in all of Minecraft. So crazy that, like, I have barely have scratched the surface on, on this thing, and that many YouTubers are and other, like, amazing redstone people have so much trouble with this. So, there are three main modes for the comparator. You have the right, standard mode, which is comparison mode, hence the name comparator. You have subtraction mode, which is, you just click this, right-click here, and it'll turn on this redstone torch, that's subtraction mode. And you have when the comparator takes an output from something. For example, a chest, it will judge how full the chest is and take a uh, redstone output based on that. For example, if I take a bunch of these blocks and I put them here, you can see the redstone signal extends a lot more than if I just have this. Alright, so... That's the main function of the comparator. I'm going to teach you what each of those these things are. So first, we have comparison mode. Sorry, comparison mode. Comparison mode is where you it's, it judges the input that's from beh behind it. So, for example, we have this redstone torch that's 3 away. 3 minus 15 is 12, which means that this is a signal strength of 12 going into it. And since it doesn't compare, there's no signal coming from there. This signal is stronger, meaning it will give the output of 12 signal strength. But then if I activate this, right, as you can see, this also is 12. But since this is the same signal strength, so this is 12 signal strength, this is also 12 signal, signal strength, it's comparing these two, it's like, okay, well the one that's, the one that goes out my back is still fine, so it will keep the pulse going. But for example, if I shorten this, then the comparator will turn off as this is a higher signal strength of 13. And so anyways, if this signal strength is uh oops, the signal strength is way less, for example, uh 11 signal uh, 11 redstone signal strength and then this is tw uh 12 is the comparator will still give a 12 block output. Alright, so that's pretty helpful for some redstone contraptions. For example, uh, if you have your comparator here, you have an input coming from like a daylight sensor, then you have another input coming from like your another redstone contraption you have, and you want it so that if the di if the time is like day, the system the this one system won't activate while everything else does. If the time is night, nothing activates. Something like that. And so, yeah, this is the comparator. So now we have subtraction mode. So you just saw what comparison mode was. This is subtraction mode. So here you have a signal strength of 13 going into the comparator. Oops. 13 going into the comparator. Minus a signal strength of... Oh jeez, uh, twelve, twelve, going into, which means that the output is should be one, which it is. Thirteen going in, twelve. So basically, it takes this number and subtracts it based on this number. So if we make this bigger than that, it will just not give a redstone output no matter what. So this can also be very helpful for some circuits, and including one of my favorites, which is a redstone clock. You can make a ridiculously fast redstone clock, which I showed you earlier in over there with the note block right here, which is you set a comparator to subtract mode, you put a redstone here, redstone here, redstone here, redstone here. So basically what happens is this is a signal strength of 15 going in, right? And that will, this is where your output will be, right? For example, we could do a uh, piston. 
Let me do a little piston action here, just as an example. Actually, this piston's going to go crazy really soon, but that's okay. And then, so the, the output goes here, 15, it goes 15, 14, and then it goes right back in, subtracts it, which means it's not, it doesn't power back, which it turns the comparator off. But then, of course, if the comparator, if that signal stops, then it turns it back on because this is still active. So what you get is a really fast clock. It's powering, which is this is unpowering that, which is then this is still powering that, and then it keeps just unpowering, powering, and powering, and unpowering. In fact, this is a weird mechanic. I just realized what you have here is I should probably put a. I could do that to make it a little slower, but what you were seeing earlier was that this is a one tick pulse so fast that the sticky piston just spits out its block. But, I mean, you probably wouldn't use it for pistonry <laughs> unless you were making like some like bouncy castle or whatever, but it can still be used in the tons of contraptions. All right, so now we're going to look at how a comparator block uh, takes an output from things and what things it can take outputs from. So it can take outputs from shulker blocks, the same as chess, how full the shulker box is, cake, how, e how much eaten it is. So if I were to go into survival mode and I were to take a bite out of it, it would give a, a lesser signal strength than 15, which is its current signal strength. Chests and trap chests, are, we've already seen, based on how full, same with hoppers. Furnaces, same with furnaces, same with brewing stands, same with dispensers and droppers. And for cauldrons, it's based on how filled they are with water. So there are a bunch more things that comparators can take uh, take outputs from, but uh, I'm not going to include them all here because it's a very long list. But these are some of the more helpful ones. Alright, thank you so much for watching. And if, if you like this video and like my other Redstone videos, please leave a like and comment. And if you really loved it, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. And stay tuned for Redstone, du Redstone for Dummies Part 2. Dijos out.